Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of JC's TV. Thanks so much for watching our other episodes. Today's episode we're going to be talking about the Haunted House and the JC's Fall Programming. We've got a couple cool additions to the set that you guys will see. Um, and I wanted to take a mention right now, you can kind of see the top of this. I have a very special tie that was off of one of our props from the Haunted House. So I figured I would definitely get into the season. Looking forward to sharing the Haunted House with you guys. So stick around and get ready for some great JC's TV. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, like I said, we had some great guests. We got Danny Bora and Joel Atkins here. Uh, Co-chair of the Haunted House is Joel and the chairperson is Danny Bora. Um, and now you can see it's been revealed to you, our awesome set decorations, uh, donated by a member of our cast, Ryan Mace. Uh, we got Donnie here, um, over here, you can see with the uh, toupee. And Lucy here, a hen, uh, so check that out. And uh, is it Joel? It's Joel, Joel, apparently. Joel the Skull. Um, obviously, I talked about my wicked tie. This thing's seen some mileage at the haunted house, for sure. Uh, so, anyways, thank you guys for being on the show. Happy to have you here. Super excited about our haunted house. So, Danny, tell me uh, how you came up with the theme for this year's haunted house. Tell us about it. The theme was actually a group effort. Um, we were all sitting around, kind of batting around ideas. And one of the characters that everybody seemed to love last year was Vermin. And Vermin's a little bit... I don't even know how to, how would you describe Vermin? I'd say he has a disassociative disorder. Yeah. Yeah, he has <laughs> like a southern accent. So one of our committee members at the time suggested, well, how about we do like Vermin's family? And we were, oh, I was kind of sitting across the table like, ah, oh, this is going to be bad. And we just started coming along with ideas. And it's kind of like a Hills Have Eyes meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets like House of a Thousand Corpses. So it's like this backwoods family. It's just. It's going to be really crazy. It's, uh, you have anything to add on it? Like, uh, I think that's a pretty pretty apt description. Yeah, it's a uh, you know character of Vermin hails from Cajun country, and uh, mm. what you'll see at Kindred Haunted House this fall is um, the misfits he 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 gathered uh, as he made his way to to Michigan. Fantastic. Now you touched on it for a second there. You said Kindred Haunted House. So mm -hmm. is that a play on the Southern Kin type of situation? Yeah, so that was one of the things uh, when we <clears throat> had the theme, we then needed a name to go along with it, and there was a, there was a lot of back and forth, which we won't get into the depths right. of. I had to fight for the name Kindred. Um, we had a big list uh, of names, but uh, ultimately we knew we wanted it to be something that evoked the idea of family, blood, and uh, we liked the sound of Kindred. Yeah, I like the fact that blood is mentioned in there as well. And of course, the fleur de lis is our like, symbol for this year. I've actually seen the fleur de lis and a couple cars driving by in the city. Why not? Now, you guys had something to do with that? Yeah, I have one on mine. Um, Joel has one. I know John has one on his vehicle also, or um, he should. Our president, Sean Abshire, had one. I saw yep, it on his right. car. Yeah. We got the uh, decals now. We've been handing them out. Fantastic. I can't wait later in the episode. We're going to show off the, uh, the logo and stuff, I'm sure. Um, so tell me, Joel, a little bit about the creative process. So obviously you had this character. Tell me how that character evolved into to this. Well... It started actually last year. Um, so with last year's theme, with the serial killer theme at Sin, um, I had previously done this this doll character, um, like this living doll man, and I didn't feel that it really fit with that theme. So I thought I need to come up with something new that fits this serial killer theme. Um, so I created this this vermin character who's a very uh, dark, um, uh, disturbed individual, does not fit into normal society. And uh, as we, we transitioned out of, of last year and we began talking about ideas for, for this Haunted House season, um, like Danny mentioned, um, it all kind of started with, uh, you know, maybe this Vermin character has an extended family and what would that look like? And now we're going to be able to find out. I mean, I think the basic, because the Haunted House family, I mean, that's what we are. We're a family. We're a bunch of misfits. We get together. We have a good time scaring people. It's the old line, we scare because we care. Right on. Um, so we get together, we scare people, we have food, you know, we're, we're this family. Well, we just took the family that we have on a daily basis and just kind of pushed it into the haunted house and kind of transformed it into, okay, this is Vermin's family that, we, you know, he took and forcefully added members to the family. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, in a sense, that's what we really are. So the theme goes with reality. 
So there's right. nothing better than that. So the creative process really was natural. It was from yeah. one type of family where everybody's working together to, oh, now it's a family that is going to be scaring people and is a little bit twisted. I, yeah. I love it. It wasn't much of an evolution. It, yeah, it didn't, take, it didn't take too far to push it into that direction. I love that. Um, so this project is uh, for the JCs, a fundraiser, right? So tell me a little bit about the fundraising aspect of the haunted house. Well, we always try to raise as much money as possible because it helps fund the Easter egg hunt. Um, less fortunate families get uh, Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, and the kids get toys. Um, so we're always trying to raise as much as possible. This year we've actually done a lot more with marketing. Great. Um, would you like to talk about the marketing a little bit? I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, so uh, really pushing the, the social media side. Um, if anyone is interested on Facebook, you can search Kindred Haunted House. And uh, I've been making weekly posts there since, since January to keep the public informed. Um, we also have um, Instagram. We, had, we did a photo shoot. Um, we did a video, which we'll see later. And uh, really just trying to engage the public year round and keep them informed about the project. Because the name and often the location changes each year with mm -hmm. the, the JC's Haunted House, I thought it was important to have more of a presence so that people tied the two together so that right. when sin became kindred, people were able to see that segue and, and not have to wonder, oh, where's the haunted house going to be this year? What's it right. going to be called? And I think nowadays, especially, that, that presence is very important. That's fantastic. And we do have a couple little ploys to, you know, to reference sin from last year. And to not, we don't want to forget... Like, we don't want to just pretend that sin never happened. We right. want that transition. We want people to be able to recognize, okay, yeah, they were the same people that put sin on last year. Great. And hopefully whoever runs it next year has some sort of reference to Kindred, just so we can keep everything, you know, real smooth. Because in previous years, it just seems like the new year forgets the last year, you know. Right. And I've had plenty of people ask me, well, do you guys know who ran, you know, whatever house last year? And we're like, yeah, we did that yeah, too. We did it, right. Um, so we're hoping to just kind of get rid of that altogether and have everybody recognize us as the Wyandotte JC's Haunted House, no matter what the and name the, is. And there's continuity there. Yeah. And actually, it seems like the uh, city of Wyandotte and its offices, especially building and engineering, have been a huge help to us, uh, especially with the location that we've been able to get. Um, anything you'd like to say to those guys if they're watching? They're just a huge help. Um, always really reliable. I mean, they get back to us in a reasonable amount of time. I mean, I know they're busy. We're busy. It's kind of crazy schedules. Right. But I'm really thankful that they were able to give us the building as early as they did this year. And, yeah, they saved our butts a time or two, and we're really appreciative of it. You mentioned getting the building. So, obviously, <coughs> the, the JCs um, get a building from the city in a very low dollar amount lease, and they let us, you know, basically put on this fundraiser. Um, getting the building in time is a huge, huge step. So how early did you get the building this, this year, and how does that compare – to previous years? Well, this year we got the building July 1st. We had keys. We weren't allowed in until after street fair, fair which enough. is reasonable. Um, previous years, last year, I don't think we got the building until the beginning of September. Okay, yeah. And the year before that, I think we got in end of July. I mean, we're usually in a lot later than what we were this year. Yeah. And we've been working on this since November. We've gotten all the ideas, the name, all that, you know, way before we even got into the building. So I say we have a really, really good head start this year that other years haven't had. And it's just yeah. because we sat down. Usually chair people decide like a month or two beforehand, oh, I think I'm going to run the haunted house. Right. Me and Joel sat down last November and we're like, okay, let's do this. And we've been pretty much day in, day out, nonstop working on it. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot more than what people realize. And some people, when I tell them what we do, they're like, and this is volunteer? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I go to work, I come home, and I go to Haunted House. Right. Go home, sleep, you and know, come back. do it's, it all over it's again. It's the real deal. There's at least six months of the year where the Haunted House is, is more than a full-time job. Yeah. And that brings me to the next thing. Um, this is a community service organization, a volunteer organization, leadership training organization. Um, Joel, how does the Haunted House tie into volunteerism for you? Well, uh, I think in a number of ways it is... Um, you know, being a haunted house junkie, uh, there's the obvious appeal that you get to go and work on this project and see these ideas come to life and then act in it. But it's also rewarding to be able to, you know, you, you do learn a lot of stuff. I'm not very proficient with, with tools or building. Danny's very good with that stuff. So I've been able to, to learn some of that side. But also for 
you know, the, the, the younger kids who come, the teenagers who come, um, it is, it's rewarding to have someone look to you as a leader on a project and, and you can teach them things, whether it's, it's how to uh, work a haunt in terms of acting or um, working with particular tools or learning, you know, John mm -hmm. can teach them the electrical <laughs> side. Um, and the fact that everything we're doing there, because it is a fundraiser and the funds go back to support our other events, um, which, which just benefit the community. That's fantastic. For me, the biggest thing is like trying to teach the kids, trying to teach the younger generations. Like I started, mm -hmm. you know, when I was 13. Right. Um, I didn't know anything going into this. And if you would have told me when I was 13 that I'd be running it, I'd go, no. You're kidding, right? <laughs> yeah, you learn a lot. But yeah, that was like 11 years ago now. And I'm running it and I'm teaching the younger generations now. And it's, it's really rewarding. I mean, there are some times when you're just kind of like, geez, this is a lot of work. Why am I doing this? And then you look back at all the kids that you're, you're showing how to wire, you're showing how right. to build, and you're like, this is why. That's awesome. I, I love that aspect of, of our haunted house. And it, it does so much for the, all the high school kids and local teens. It's more than just a, a volunteer spot. It's more than just a haunted house. It's more than just a family. It's all those things rolled into one place. And we've been lucky to do this project for the last 40 years. 41 years now. 41 years now, this being our 41st year. And actually, Joel, um, maybe this is a good time to talk about, you're in the, the middle of produ uh, producing um, a, an excellent documentary. You want to talk briefly about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so last year, um, prior to being a member of the JCs, I, I approached several members of the JCs and said, what do you guys think about doing a documentary? Because you know, at the time, there was a lot of talk that that could have been the last year. That, now, luckily, that didn't turn out to be the case. But um, so conducted numerous, I think 20, roughly 20 studio interviews. And then there was um, behind the scenes footage of uh, the last year's build on Sin. And that's something I've been working on on and off since last year. And uh, with some sleepless nights, I'm hoping to get it out this October so oh. that people can see what the whole process is about. And hopefully, so we can attract some new people to the project and others can see exactly what goes in to this project because looking at it from the outside, as I did for several years, even even uh, in like 2014 and 15, I came up and I yeah. acted a few nights, but that doesn't give you any idea of, of how massive this project right. is and how much is involved in it. I remember, I met you a bunch of times before when you'd come through to kind of view the haunted houses, but when you actually came to work, I said, there's just something special. This guy's got a talent and I'm so excited that you're a member of our group and a huge part of our haunted house now. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about, we're going to shoot to um, a, a production that was made by Jake Webb Productions that, uh, that Danny put together for the Haunted House. Tell us a little, about it, a little bit about it and we'll, we'll throw to the clip. Uh, it, we were sitting around, like we already had the basic idea of the house, and I literally, I had a dream one night about it. I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, this is good. And I started telling everybody in the committee and they were like, yeah, let's do that. And we set up, uh, we built it in the garage. I, Literally, it was like a day's worth of building. I built a torture chair for it, and a couple of days later, we were shooting it. Jake came back with it, and when the first time I watched it, my jaw just dropped. Awesome. It was amazing. All right, guys, check it out right here. You know, throughout history, animals, we do one of two things. We adapt or we die. Oh yeah, I see the anger, I see the malice, and you're all struggle against your mind. Come on, go on. Yeah, there you go. You ain't nothing in that little fight in you. But the thing is today, you, you're going to be recast in my image. Yeah, yeah, I see it the fear in your eyes. It's just an illusion. Yeah, you can use that fear. You can take it, internalize it, and power yourself with it. This, this is over. Oh my God. That's much better. There you go. I see it. Accept it. Hey, you see, the thing about uh, folks like us, uh, well, we rise from the ashes. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the family. Excellent. That was a killer clip. Danny, from, from dream to nightmare, uh, that thing turned out pretty great. 
Uh, one thing I'd like to talk about is sponsors for the Haunted House. Um, now we're kind of in the, the building phase right now, so do you have some sponsors already? So the video we just watched, as we mentioned earlier, is a, done by Jake Webb Productions. Um, if you're interested in his work, jakewebproductions.com. We also had promotional um, photos done by Patched Miracle Photography, and those are um, currently being shared on our Instagram page, but they'll also pop up on um, the Facebook page. And uh, if you look at our page on michiganhauntedhouses.com, they'll be there as well. Um, Wine Dot Cable is actually a sponsor of ours. Fantastic. And uh, the October Academy did our, our logo. So if you see that, the orange Kindred Haunted I House logo. I love that logo. That's, Super fancy. Yeah, that's, that was done by the October And Academy. a big fan of Wine Dot Cable here who helps me with this, this beautiful <laughs> <Yes>. TV program, <laughs> JC's TV. Good work. Hey, these birds getting closer. It's, it, it seemed like... They are a little closer together. I didn't touch anything. I didn't move anything. Hmm. Uh, creepy stuff going on in the studio, folks. But yeah, if, if we're actually looking for uh, additional sponsors. So um, if anyone's interested, um, we, uh, we could take some additional sponsors for the Haunted House. Uh, if you have a business in, in Wyandotte, um, in particular, um, food and, and drink for our nights of uh, operation so we can feed our crew. So if anyone's interested in that, you know, get a hold of us on our Facebook page. Fantastic. And that's actually a great thing. I even know uh, Drew from the little pierogi and crepe shop here in Wyandotte that's come and brought pierogies last year. Those things um, are delicious. Oh my God, they are so good. Um, and a lot of other local places have come and help, help feed our teenagers and our JCs. Um, so hopefully some of you folks will, will come out and, and uh, become a sponsor for the Haunted House. If you want to get involved, obviously there'll be uh, information on the screen later on. Um, or what? Where should they go for information? Facebook page, yeah, it's okay. probably the most reliable. Um, Just search Kindred source. Haunted yep. House. Kindred Haunted House, you'll find us on Facebook. Yep. Fantastic. Um, so, okay, we're talking about the info to get involved. They know where to grab that at. Um, one thing that's super cool about the Haunted House is you get an opportunity to not just be scared by props and by dark hallways. There's an acting element. So can, can Danny and both, maybe D Danny first, then Joel, tell us a little bit about how acting comes into play Okay, so a lot of the haunted houses, because we're part of the Michigan Haunters Association, so we go to about 13 other haunted houses for the haunt swap, and that's basically where they open on an off night and we get to go through, which is something a lot of haunters don't get to do because we're busy working our own haunts. True. They all rely on their props. They all rely on their mechanic, you know, mechanical dinosaurs and everything, which are cool, right. but it's the same scare every time. To where we have... All of it, the volunteers, we teach them how to scare, we teach them how to do, you know, basic stuff, and then let them go on their own. Each scare is different every time. You know, they don't go boo and then, you know, retreat, retract back into the darkness. It's, right. it's personalized to each customer, each visit. There could be a group that goes through on Thursday and a group that comes through on Friday, and they get the totally different experiences. Right. And it, I think it makes it more you know, more in depth, more like catering. And I don't know, to me, and more it real. might, yeah, it might be because I'm a little bit biased, you know, but I would rather go to a haunted house filled with real actors than animatronics any day because Absolutely. it's a little different than, oh, look at that dinosaur to holy cow, this dude's in my face. This is happening to me yeah, right this now. Is, this yeah. is real. I don't yeah. know what he's capable of. I, I, I love it. Yeah, I think it's a lot better to have real actors. What's your take, Joel? Well, I think uh, an important thing for people to understand when they're going to uh, a haunted house, haunted houses are, there's all sorts of different styles. Like Danny mentioned, there are, there are those that are uh, animatronic or, or prop heavy, and they're cool in their own right. But if you want, if you're looking for something with, with actual people, um, because we're a nonprofit, we, we can't afford those expensive animatronics. Right. You know, some of those things range in, in the thousand, thousands of dollars, so we rely on actors. Um, and in my experience, I've always felt the, the, the most crucial element to a haunted house is the actors. I always tell people that um, a haunted house is interactive theater, um, and the, yeah. a good crew of actors will will ad-lib and, and play off of their audience, and that's when you talk about... Um, you can see a different show on any given night, that's where that comes in, is playing off of your audience. You can have your, your sort of opening lines, your icebreakers, yeah. but, uh, and you can have your sort of, you know, your, your closing lines, but everything else in the middle is just, it's improv. You gotta just yeah. go with the flow because each guest is different. Some people, you get the people who are utterly terrified and they're easy to get. Yeah. Um, you get the people who, you're not gonna scare them, but you can make them laugh. And people enjoy that too. And then you have the people who are standoffish and 
they were just curmudgeons, and you have yeah. to work them in a different way right. too. You try and bring them around, but some people, um, ultimately, some people aren't into the act. But um, if you can, you can change it up, and that's the one thing I like. What we've done with Kindred is, we specifically we made a concerted effort to build these rooms around the scare instead of just building rooms and then saying, okay, what's happening in this room? We had specific ideas of this is the Love scare it. in this room, this is the character, this is what needs, this is how the room needs to be arranged. For those and type of things to take place. For that scare yes. to work. Yeah. I love it. So speaking of the rooms, uh, are we allowed to talk about how many rooms are going to be in here? We, we, yeah, we could it's like discuss 14 some of it. or 15? I think there's right. 16 well, rooms. Are we counting the last, last room? Well, so there's some know. secret rooms? So, All right. So it's 16. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of rooms. This this is no short haunted house. It's no trailer haunted house. It's, this believe, is the real deal. I believe the actual maze and everything is just under a quarter mile. That's pretty significant. Um, that was some John Deering math. Yeah, yeah. that. All right. That was some <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, after walking it so many times, it feels like it. Yeah, I bet. So, but yeah, it's a really long house. It's the amazing, the rooms. It's going to be, it's going to be really cool. Um, we did get a new prop this year, a very large prop that I think a lot of guests are going to be very uh, terrified, terrified of. Terrified of? Great. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the, their reactions to that. I'm not going to reveal what it is because then there's no fun. No, no, don't, don't ruin the fun. We want this thing to be new for everybody that comes through. Um, you talked about acting a lot. Uh, and if I know right, uh, some of the, the crew, including yourself, and I don't know if you, Joel, but I think you did, the Haunt Con. You guys went Haunt you Haunt. traveled out of state. Tell us about that. Uh, we went down to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and there was a bunch of haunted, there was a couple other haunted houses from Michigan too, which was really cool. And they taught us just a bunch of just really awesome things that we didn't even think about, you know? Like, from the moment you walk in the door, you want the whole area to be that haunted house. Like, you don't want anything of the outside element. Right. So you want to completely envelop them into whatever you want them to believe. And I guess, like, a, a lot of, like, Disney World and stuff, uh, do that when they take you on the train they they're enveloping you into their world they want you to believe what they want you to believe so you're getting immersed in the story yeah. it's it's real there's no there's no like oh look there's a mcdonald's cup we're not there's not gonna be anything of that nature this Great. year that's from the minute you walk into the door you are in kindred you are at the house you know you are part of the family i love it and people some people are gonna love it some people are gonna pee hopefully all right not um, too much though <laughs> you're right Oh, Sanitation much. costs yeah. on that are pretty outrageous. I'm not mopping it. You're going to mop it. I'm not mopping it I'm either. Not mopping it. Let me ask you this. We heard a little bit about vermin. Who's Dr. Giggles? Can you tell us about this? Dr. Giggles. Um, Dr. Giggles is a very crazy doctor, was a scientist. I don't know if you remember a couple of years back at Delirium. Um, actually exposed Dr. Giggles' backstory a little bit, where Dr. Giggles was the head scientist at Dream Corp Laboratories. I do recall Dream Corp. And created the uh, drug AWNP, which is like the miracle drug. It's supposed to cure all and went horribly wrong. And a lot of the employees died, unfortunately. And there were some zombies we had to deal with. It was a very rough scenario. There was a toxic uh, area, I yeah, think I was, remember that. Yeah, it was bad. It was toxic. There was a, a lot of zombies. It was, it was rough. But... Dr. Giggles, unfortunately, from what I hear, was caught by vermin and tortured and mm -hmm. forced into the family. As we saw in that video. Yeah. Welcome to the family. It's, it's a rough situation, and I, very, I feel very bad for the doctor. Um, well, that was something awkward for me. I get, a, I get a phone call one morning, and Danny says, she's like, hey, I had this dream last night that you were torturing me. And I was Whoa. like... Okay, where does this go? Where does this go? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, then she expounded on the idea. I was like, okay, I was like, this is actually a great idea. Um, we need to make this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was really started the part of the seeds of the whole the whole kindred family is that uh, vermin abducted Doctor yeah. Giggles and and indoctrinated. Doctor Giggles it. doesn't play well with others. We all know this. We all know this. Yeah. Well, after the new mask. And the old mask was removed and the new mask was put on and Dr. Giggles was forced to learn the ways of the family. Hopefully we can get the doctor to play well with others this year. I hope so. Well, Maybe. I hope play play well with others to to an extent. With the family. Yeah. yeah. And I think when I was there, I saw a part of the build. I think I saw some AWMP uh, bottles sitting there. So uh, I don't know if that's going to play a factor in this, uh, this year's house or not. The doctor may or may not be working on some new additions to the AWMP. All right. We have to speed up the indoctrination process. I mean, people just aren't what they used to be. It's very hard to brainwash people nowadays with all the social media. 
Yeah, so, you watch it every day. It's fake news and so, yeah, so we, who knows, right? We have to do something to speed the process along because I don't have all day to try to get you know somebody to believe what we want them to believe. Got Come it. on. We've got ways to break those people, though. We've got all certain right. areas inside the haunted house that those folks go if uh, they don't get on board with the program. I yeah, but it. the AWMP helps. Face it, we wouldn't be anywhere without that. Right. Tell me this, when is the haunted house open for business? When can people come come and be part of the family? Opening night's gonna be September 28th. Wow, and, and that's not even October. It's nope. So people can really get in early, I love yep. it. Yep, we're doing a soft open that weekend, and then we're gonna go into the last day is what, November 4th or 5th? Mm -hmm. Third and fourth. Third and fourth. Okay. And that's gonna be the lights out uh, flashlight nights. Flashlight nights, which I've heard. Tell us a little bit about the flashlight nights so people at home can uh, hear what that is. There is no strobe lights, black lights, nothing of that sort. It's, it's just, just you get a flashlight that we provide and you have to go through the house. And the batteries don't always work, is that true? I, I don't know. I All mean, right. I put batteries in them. I can't guarantee you they're good batteries. All they right. may die in the middle of your journey through Kindred. Your flashlight may break simultaneously. All right. Suddenly and just so we got that. Uh, we got the flashlight nights. We got the whole month of October. Um, We're going to be doing a couple other promotional things during the year. It will be released on the Facebook page. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to do something really big because there's a Friday the 13th this year. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping to do something real cool for that day. Fantastic. It hasn't been decided yet. but. And I've also heard for the children there is going to be the Friendly Monster Night. More info about that coming up. Yep. But uh, no scares and they can come and get candy. It's during the day and yeah. the lights are on and that's a totally safe experience for them. Uh, but the rest is totally creepy for everybody else. So yep. um, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to uh, talk on JC's TV. Let us a little bit into the world of uh, the Kindred crew. And uh, just thanks so much for being here today and telling us what you got going on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and real quickly, if anyone out there is interested in working with us, we're always looking for new family members. Fantastic. Speaking of, we'll throw to a screen that has information how to get uh, more involved. Thank you guys so much for watching another great episode of JC's TV. I can't thank my guests enough today, Danny Bohr, the chair of the Haunted House, Joel Adkins, the co-chair, uh, for just giving us a treat of an episode today. Um, the, the generous donations of Ryan Nace, of uh, Donnie and Lucy, who's uh, over my shoulder, and of course, Joel, uh, who's on my shoulder. Why not what? What you doing later, Joel? <laughs>